The Little Miracles of Manatech, Suntech Tomatoes, a beautiful little tomato farm about 40 minutes south of here, in the heart of the Great Carlton Riding, where uh, some entrepreneurial farmers opened a greenhouse to sell beautiful local produce to residents in the area. They're delicious. They are delicious and they are legendary right across the region. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the farmers learned that the carbon tax the government applied would go on the CO2 that they release into the greenhouse. Now, of course, that CO2 is required to expand the growth and increase, increase uh, the produce that comes out of the greenhouse. This CO2 does not actually even go into the atmosphere. It goes into the plant life, uh, something that the Liberals may have missed in grade four science class. Um, but the reality is that it makes the tomatoes more expensive. So what is the consequence of the tax on these tomatoes? Well, it is at times more expensive to buy a Manatec tomato in Manatec than a Mexican tomato in Manatec. Why? Because the taxes are lower in Mexico, even though the pollution is higher. The what does this price signal do? It tells the customer to buy a tomato from the other side of North America, which has to be trained and trucked all the way up to Canada, burning fossil fuels the whole way there and increasing emissions along the way. What happened to the local 100-mile diet that environmentalists used to promote? Well, this tax makes that diet more difficult and less affordable. Thus, the big logical fallacy of the Liberal carbon tax. It drives up the cost of domestic production and drives that production to foreign, more polluting jurisdictions that then require higher transportation costs and more emissions to bring them back to Canadian consumers here at home. Our approach should be exactly the opposite. We should bring production home, our food, our energy, our resources, right here in Canada. Let's look at the three falsehoods of the Liberal carbon tax. One, they said that it would help us meet our targets for emissions reductions. Well, the Liberals have now been in power for seven years and they have not hit a single solitary re emissions reduction target. In fact, even in the year 2020, when large parts of our economy and our population were locked down and unable to even drive, they came nowhere close to reaching their targets. Let me tell you how far they missed them. They missed them by 57 megatons. That's the equivalent of all of the emissions of the four Atlantic provinces or the equivalent of our entire electricity sector. In other words, if we had turned off all of the electricity in Canada in that year, in addition to having been locked down during COVID, then we would have still fallen just short of meeting the targets that the Liberals set for themselves. In other words, the carbon tax did not hit those targets. It did not come anywhere close. And in fact, we expect that the emissions will again start rising now that the lockdowns are fortunately behind us. So that is the, false, the first falsehood. Now, if the Liberals were really serious about reducing emissions, they had many options. They could have signaled their support for small modular nuclear reactors so that we could use our prodigious know-how to, to, to supply Canadians with emissions-free nuclear energy. We have the biggest supply of uranium as feedstock right in Saskatchewan, the best nuclear engineers right here in Ontario. We have need for this electricity in provinces nationwide. We have provinces that have signed on to memoranda of understanding to replace high emitting sources of electricity with small modular nuclear reactors. But of course, our uh, Minister of the Environment has said he doesn't even agree with nuclear. So I don't know where he expects electricity to come from, but certainly nobody is going to invest in creating these modular reactors if the Minister of the Environment himself is against them. They could have backed up carbon capture and storage, of which Canadian energy, the industry, is the leading in the world. The industry putting carbon back in the ground where it came from. 
the carbon trunk, which allows that uh, carbon to go back to geological formations where it can be safely stored. The government was slow to support it and insufficient in that support. They could have incentivized industry to further reduce emissions. They could have also used Canada's clean energy production to displace dirty foreign production. We have 1,300 trillion cubic feet of natural gas right here in Canada. And with the uh, hydroelectricity in Quebec, Newfoundland, and British Columbia, we can liquefy that natural gas without any emissions at all. In fact, we have the shortest shipping distances from North America to both Asia and Europe allowing us to uh, reduce the cost and the emissions necessary to get that energy to those markets. And of course, that can clean Canadian natural gas could displace dirty coal-fired electricity around the world. Now, Liberals might want to dispute this today, but that was their contention not long ago. The Prime Minister showed up for a photo op to take credit for the previous Conservative government's approval of the LNG Canada project in northern British Columbia. And he said at the time, we know LNG produces half the amount of carbon emissions as coal. He then said that the, this project would have the effect of reducing global emissions by displacing dirtier sources of uh, electricity in Asia. And so this is the quote. So by sending Canadian LNG to markets that are today powered by coal, we will help those jurisdictions transition away from this energy source. Uh, according to Rob Seeley, uh, in the president uh, of the E3 Merge Consulting, for every unit of greenhouse gas British Columbia produces to get the LNG to market, the overseas reduction in GHGs goes down by a factor of 10. Wow. In other words, by replacing those, those uh, foreign uh, coal fire with our Canadian uh, energy, we can reduce emissions. Further, the same expert said shipping LNG at design capacity from Kitimat to displace coal-generated electricity in China would reduce global GHG emissions by 60 to 90 million tons annually, equivalent to the annual production of GHGs in all of BC. In other words, wouldn't that be something? What an achievement that would be. And by the way, 60 to 90 million tons of greenhouse gases is exactly what the Liberals promised the carbon tax would eliminate. Of course, it did not happen, but this project would have allowed it to. And yet, projects like this are not able to go ahead because of government gatekeepers standing in the way. When this Prime Minister took office, there were 15 LNG proposals on the table. Not a single one has been completed seven years later. Imagine the emissions we could have reduced and the paychecks we could have grown if we had gotten out of the way and allowed these projects to proceed. We could export more of our civilian grade uranium so that foreign jurisdictions could shut down dirty coal and replace it with clean Canadian energy. We could support Quebec and Manitoba as they attempt to export and get better revenues for their uh, hydroelectricity. There are countless ways that we can combat the emissions of our country and the world without taxing and punishing our citizens. That's right. And if the Liberals had done that, maybe they had not, would not have missed every single target they have set. The second promise that they made was that the carbon tax would make everyone better off, right? They would pay this tax, but there would be a check in the mail that would compensate them for it. It sounds like one of those scam emails that you get. It says, if you just give us your bank card information, uh, we'll make a, a, a big deposit and you'll be rich. It's from an uncle on the other side of the world somewhere, right? Well, it turns out uh, th that the check bounced. Uh, according to the parliamentary budget officer, uh, I'm looking at the numbers right here on the table he set out, the net cost to Albertans of this carbon tax when it is fully implemented will be 20 $282 per household. Then Saskatchewan, $1,464 per household. Manitoba, $1,145 per household. And where are we here? Let's see if we can find Ontario. Ontario, $1,461 in net costs, net of the rebates the government has promised. That is, by the way, the least of the problem. 
for the six provinces that do not get any rebate, they will be far worse off. Now remember, the carbon tax may be provincially administered in British Columbia, Quebec, uh, and, and some other re regions of the country. However, it is federally imposed. So even if provinces have their own regime, they will have to triple their carbon tax in order to, to meet the mandate that this government has put in place. And they will get no rebate at all. Those provinces will be vastly worse off than the cases I just mentioned. This at a time when Canadians cannot pay their groceries, cannot gas their vehicles, and are fearing the cost that winter will hit them with in just a few short months. This is exactly the last time that we need to raise a tax. Think about it. They're proposing to bring in a 40 cent a litre tax on gasoline. How many of the single mothers, of the working farmers, of the welders, of the waitresses could afford to pay another 40 cents a litre in gas taxes. Every party in this House except the Conservatives want to hit those working people with those higher taxes. We will stand in the way. We will fight back. We will defend consumers against this tax. And the final falsehood is the Liberals said that this carbon tax would never go above $50 a tonne. That, it was, that was it. 50 and we're done. 50 a tonne and we're done, they said, right? And that was before the election. And surprise, after the election, they said that the tax would have to be tripled. They said it was so ineffective that we needed to make it three times the size uh, in order to do the job. And that's just what we know about. If they're going to triple the tax after just one broken election promise, imagine if they were, God forbid, given another mandate. What surprise would we hear the next day after the election? How high would the tax have to go? A dollar a liter in new taxes? Tripling people's power, home, uh, home heating bills? What other costs would they surprise Canadians with if they got the chance? They have broken their promise on this. They have broken their promise on the income taxes, which they said would go down. They have broken their promise on countless other taxes. And we can expect that they will only break more promises because they need to raise taxes in order to feed their insatiable appetite for spending. Well, Canadians won't let them. Conservatives will run on a low tax agenda in the next election, and we will win and we will deliver that low tax agenda. <laughs> And we forget sometimes that it is our small businesses that will be asked to bear a disproportionate burden. They get no rebate at all. Unlike large industrial corporations, they get a, co a complete exemption from the carbon tax. Small businesses do have to pay it on the cost of heating up their restaurants, of firing up their stoves in order to feed their patrons, on transporting their goods, on running their factories. All of them have to pay those taxes because they are not big enough to get the exemption that the large industrial corporations have received. And therefore, we can expect more small businesses to make up the difference by having to raise prices on consumers or lower wages on their workers, all making Canadians worse off at a time when they can least afford it. Madame la Présidente, les petits et moyens. Madam Speaker, small and medium businesses do not get an exemption. They have to pay more for the tax. It's going to triple if the Liberals stay in power with their coalition partners in the NDP. So that's why we're going to continue defending our small and medium businesses who create jobs, who provide services and goods to consumers. Conservatives will always defend small and medium-sized business against this tax hike. Of course, this tax uh, comes on top of other taxes. They propose to raise taxes on paychecks starting on January 1st. Uh, they will raise EI and CPP payroll taxes, even though they have enough funds at the current rates in order to fund both of those programs, including with the regular increased benefits that can be expected. They want to jeopardize the paychecks of Canadians to raise taxes and run big surpluses in the EI account, which they then will use to, to fund overall government spending rather than to provide workers with protection against unemployment. Conservatives believe 
that EI should not be a cash cow for government. It should be a protection for our workers, and we will not support any increase in the EI payroll cut. Our theory, our principle, is that a dollar left in the hands of the person who earned it is always better than in the hands of the politician who taxed it. That's right. We yeah. want this to be, once again, a country where hard work pays off, where the person who puts in that extra hour takes that extra shift or earns that extra bonus, keeps that money to give their kids a summer camp or give their family an opportunity for a small camping trip or, God forbid, to upsize their house or move from an apartment into a place of their own. This should be a country of opportunity, of boundless possibility for anyone who's prepared to put in the work. You know, it's appalling to me that a single mom of three earning $55,000 a year goes out and earns another dollar, loses 80 cents in government clawbacks and taxes, according to a study by this very finance department in this government. We're punishing the people who do the work of this nation. Our workers deserve rewards for their work. Our small businesses who take risks and mortgage their homes to survive and to supply our communities with services and our people with jobs, they deserve to keep the fruits of their labor. labor. And that is why Conservatives will always stand on the side of the people who work hard, who pay their taxes, and play by the rules. We will put Canadians back in control of their money, their lives, right here in Canada, the freest nation on earth. Yeah.